You know, I've been an ASAP Rocky fan, but being able to check out a documentary about his backstory and about the incident in Sweden and really bringing a lot of that information to light, you knew I had to jump all over it. So that's why we're going to dive into the review of this new documentary right now. What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel today for another review. Today we're going to be reviewing the film Stockholm Syndrome which is making its world premiere in the spotlight documentary category this year at Tribeca Film Festival. And like I said, this film is about ASAP Rocky. Now ASAP Rocky, everyone knows his music, everyone knows he's a trendsetter when it comes to fashion, but how did it all come about where did the origin what's the origin stories of this because what's really fascinating to me is that asap being from new york he doesn't come off as a new yorker he doesn't sound like a new yorker but even with that him being different which is fine he was so quickly accepted that i always wondered like man how because new york they're kind of vicious like if you don't sound like you're from new york new york don't embrace you you have to have that New York sound or it's you, you need to go somewhere else. So um, this is a really cool documentary about um, ASAP Rocky titled Stockholm Syndrome. And if you know what that means, like this is so well fitting for the title. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about his backstory and also the incident that happened in Stockholm, Sweden. So this is brought to you by the directors, the architects. And uh, again, this is a documentary on ASAP Rocky and Rick getting interviews from um shoot matter of fact before i even talk about that everybody and their mom is in this documentary you got people like kevin durant joe button asap mop pharrell and even cameos from rihanna so like everybody that's anybody that knows him and that's only like i don't know five percent of all the people that this show in is so a lot of different people uh, make appearances in this documentary but yeah, so again, because you're talking about his backstory, we're getting to know Rakim Mayers, who, you know, before he was ASAP, you know, so we're getting um, conversation and interviews from his mom and his sister, and they talked about, you know, being in New York and then happened to move around a little bit and, you know, the absence of his dad at a point of his life. Um, and, you know, a along with that too, like you, you're, you're getting, you know, where did he get so ambitious to really be experimental with his sound? And then from his sound went to his fashion. And then, you know, just the mixture of both the sound and, um, and the styles really molded him to who he, who he's become. And so thus, so many other people took to that and he became a trendsetter. Um, so it's really cool to kind of really see that all come together. And then, you know, obviously, you talked about the ASAP mob coming together, which is something I always wonder. How did they all come together? How did so many people from New York or the New York area come together with all the same mind and acceptability to the way that he saw things, which I thought was really cool. And again, that's just, again, another knock on him being a trendsetter and how he influenced fashions. And, you know, I was just so interested in kind of figuring that out. Uh, when you talk about the visuals of this documentary, so for, so for number one, the first thing that kind of came to me was like um, the animation was like old school black animation, like you know, and, and art, like the old um, Little Bill show, and then you layered it with his music, which was obviously the focal point of the soundtrack here, and then you know a whole bunch of other different visuals, and you know because of him having this really artistic mind, you would expect that, but definitely felt. Uh, I really appreciate how the visuals look and definitely you can tell they was homage to other styles of visuals that we've seen in the past. Um, so yes, going to the Sweden incident in Stockholm, um, you know, this is when he was arrested for assault allegations in which, you know, I didn't even know, but they considered uh, this part of Sweden to be the most segregated city in the world, which I was like, wow. But then again, no surprise. Um, and it really explained how it was all played out from his team. And, you know, being in Sweden, they have a no bail system, no plea, and they pretty much used him as an example, which is, you know, a, a big thing in his own. But then they talked about the mistreatment while being locked up and then and then the unjust jail conditions uh, where they even said one time he would go without food for about a week, which is just mind blowing. Um, and then obviously they would restrict him from any outside contact. Uh, so, you know, very limitedly were they able to ever talk to him. And then we did get to hear the audio from when he was locked up in there. And then he was locked up for a whole month before he even received a trial, which was just kind of mind blowing. 
but because you could not have a camera in jail and you couldn't have one in the camera in, in, in the courtroom so that when they went to the trial we do get the audio from the trial but they got some really cool visuals that complement them as well so you can really get the depiction of everything that's going on um also hearing asap talk about um the the other person that was involved in this assault allegations was absolutely hilarious because he absolutely kept it a hundred on how he felt about that dude which was just very very funny um but beyond that they talked about uh another member of the asap mob asap yams and when he passed and how much that meant to him and his career and just their relationship together um stories about his dad who had passed before his first um album had dropped um and then uh, the moments of when black twitter came for him because of his comments on black lives matter so that was funny as well but um you know after his release from jail was business as usual he got back to things so we we got to see him doing um uh, we got to see some behind the scenes at concerts and him being eager to get back into that uh they talked about the issues in the justice system globally and how the trump administration was upset with asap because like they pretty much were saying they were the reason why he was released and he needed to thank him and he kind of like ghosted him he was like nah I'm, I'm not doing that um but then yeah he went back to stockholm and he put on a, con a, a concert he performed and he gave back to the people there which i thought was really really special so like overall like i've always been a fan of him but like i got such a deeper appreciation now really bringing a lot of this story to light and just really get, being able to be personal with him in all these different circumstances and hearing about the ups and downs of his emotions and whatnot when he was locked up i thought was like really personal and i i just appreciate it and then you got to stay through the credits because there's some funny little um outtakes that's on there that definitely will be the ice of the cake but yeah stockholm syndrome it's a documentary if you're an asap fan you totally want to check out and even if you're not if you're just looking for a documentary that talks about um uh, you know the craziness of being locked up in a foreign country this is it and it really it really is good it's um about um it's about an hour and what's about 105 minutes so very easy watch you would definitely enjoy it. a lot of good information laughs good music and visuals so definitely something you want to check out but totally if you're a tribacker jump in the comments let me know your thoughts about this film and if not when you ever you are able to see it come back and let me know your thoughts on it but as always folks stay tuned because we got more reviews coming very soon thank you for watching folks